Man, this thing is sick. All right, so today we're gonna do a Tundra TRD Pro grill swap. I have a TRD off-road hybrid, and uh, we now have this new Rave TRD Pro grill, uh, basically a replica grill that makes it look like the TRD Pro. And so we're gonna install its light bar, we're gonna transfer the camera over, we're gonna do uh, the radar over, we're going to install the Toyota emblem, uh, and then we're gonna do some wiring. And uh, yeah, it's gonna transform the look of this thing. So I'm really excited about that. For this, I got Fanny with me. She's hey. uh, prepping the grill. We got our buddy Josh here helping us as well. And uh, he's gonna go ahead and tape the headlights. Uh, so when we pop this bumper off in this grill, we don't scratch anything. If you like what you see, pick one up yourself. Let us know how it goes. But without further ado, let's get into it. So we've got the grill here and uh, Fanny's going ahead and removing some of the little foam pads that cover the clips. And what we're gonna do first is uh, assemble the light bar and the uh, Toyota emblem that goes there into those two spots. That way this grill is kind of ready for the transfer and then we'll begin removing the stock rail. Josh has already started kind of taping up the headlight here and that's just to prevent scratching um, from the edge there. So when you pop this off right all through here, um, you might you know, bang some things around and scratch up your nice headlights. Sounds dramatic, but on every vehicle I've ever done this on, I always find a way of scratching the headlights. Recommend taping yours. So first what you want to do, uh, come to find out, is LED bar because it fits underneath the Toyota letters. And so if you are installing an LED bar, especially the one that comes from Rave, um, I would do that first. And then definitely hand tighten everything. Um, you don't want to strip anything and break any plastics. Uh, you can use a drill, but power it down. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and do these manually. And everything lines up one way, so you really can't mess this up. Um, if it's not lining perfectly, you probably have the light bar upside down. You now have the LED bar in. We're going to go ahead and do the Toyota letters. Uh, same thing, just hand tighten these, they're all Phillips. The uh, screws come in the kit. Now you've got these installed, and this is kind of what it'll look like. Really, really nice, clean. Can't wait to get this thing in there. So we're transitioning over to the grill right now. First thing you're gonna wanna do is take a look at these clips here. There's uh, two on each side of the grill. We're gonna pop those off. And transition to the opposite side here. They look a little bit different, but same concept. Okay. And then underneath that, if uh, Josh can point to the clip, there's a little clip here. It's around, let's see if I can get a good angle for you guys. That clip right there. And we have kind of a clip removal tool, makes it easy. Pick them up on Amazon, but that pops it up. Remove that, and there's only two of those, one on each side. Boom. There it is. And now the rest is pretty much bolts and then some more clips, but they're the clips that hold the whole bumper assembly. So now what we're gonna do is unbolt the 10 millimeter uh, series of bolts up top. So next there's brackets behind the grill here. You're gonna go ahead and go through with an extender or you can come in through the top of the grill. So. 
and you'll knock out those two and then on this side over here you can see them down there as well it'll be four in total So we've transitioned underneath the vehicle. Um, there's four bolts here. So we're going to go ahead and start with the furthest one. Now what's holding it up is essentially your bolts and the fender wells uh, and then clips throughout the bumper assembly. But that's it. That's the four on the bottom. So we've transitioned to the fender wells. There are six total, two underneath and these four that you see in front of you. Go ahead and remove those. Okay, we're underneath the same fender, and there's two more down here. Then you want to repeat this on the other side as well. So what you're going to want to do is, using these kind of trim removal tools you can get on Amazon, you want to pry in through the bumper and you gotta use a little bit of violence and some, some strength because uh, your vehicle's brand new and these clips have great retention. But essentially, you wanna pull outwards towards uh, you or opposite of like the engine. We have Fanny on the other side working it on her end as well. Coming right in through the top here, and you want to pull outwards just like this. There it is. And this is loose as well. You can see I can move it because we already removed those bolts. And slowly but surely, this will come undone. And walk away from the vehicle. Yep, come with me, Josh. Okay. Okay, so now you have the uh, bumper and the entire grill assembly on the table. Go ahead and remove the passenger side top clip that controls um, whatever these visors are called here. Damper. Dampeners, air dampeners. And uh, then you're going to remove the six bolts that hold that entire assembly together. So now what you're going to want to do is remove the radar's harness. And now you're going to remove the harness for the front camera. Okay, so we're going to remove the Phillips screws that are holding the entire grill to uh, the grill bezel. Try your best not to strip, like we're doing. <laughs> yeah, well, and you. I'll stop working. All right. One second.
And as you remove those Phillips, you also want to remove these tabs. Um, they're basically threaded, uh, maybe washers or nuts or something that basically hold some of the assembly together. We'll need to move those to the new grill as well. All these tabs around the grill, you're going to want to kind of push those in with your trim removal tool. And work your way around and kind of get them all loosened up. And as you go, this whole thing will start to loosen up for you. And so we've removed the, in this case, chrome bezel. Um, you can see it kind of starting to remove as we go. And that comes off in one nice clean piece, just like that. Boom. And we're still popping some of these black clips here, as you can see there and stuff, to remove the grill. As you transition to the bottom of the grill clips, um, it's helpful to remove from the front side this uh, fog light kind of bezel trim piece. You'll notice all the tabs actually are up here like that, this one here. Uh, you'll see one like that, and it's these pieces that are sliding into them. So all you're really doing is running your trim piece kind of through, pushing all those tabs down and sliding that all the way out. And your vehicle's new, so these things, again, have great retention, so you're not really gonna hurt it. So don't be afraid to pull a little bit harder. Just make sure all the screws on the back end are actually removed. Um, another part that's helpful in removing the grill here is uh, the bumper has uh, like a bezel piece that connects to the trim piece that we removed from here. And so that is kind of in the way of these three clips here. So by releasing this one here, these tabs there, and the chrome tabs of this bezel piece, you can now free up the grill from in between. Now you're going to remove the uh, radar module. Okay. Easy peasy. To transition to the other grill, you're going to need these, uh, I guess, screw washer nuts that uh, slide right in. So take those with you as well. Okay, so to remove the uh, radar's front cover, you're gonna see uh, four clips, essentially one there, one there, and then on this back side here, you can see one here and one over there as well. And so, little tip, use the trim tool, kind of press it in between the two clips and then kind of push down hard on this there it goes. So now we're transitioning to the camera relocation. So we're going to take the one off the stock grill. So what we're looking at right now is the uh, camera access hole so the lens can poke through. It comes kind of covered and with like pre-cut tabs. So we're going to snip those out, try to make a perfect circle, and then the new cam or the original camera will be able to slide right through that. push the camera through. We've uh, lightly sanded the edge and removed the plastic cover piece using you can use a knife or a box cutter and everything lines up pretty good. Okay so we just put on the uh, black plastic um, cover of the radar back on and then we also slid the retaining nuts back on and so we're gonna go ahead and drill the module for the radar into its position on the new grill. I wanted to take this minute to basically show uh, the stock camera bracket and then show the 3D printed one that comes with the grill. Um, you're looking at pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, from a thickness standpoint, you can see they're about the same. Um, from a size standpoint, everything lines up holes-wise, so you can kind of 
find them up here and you'll see uh, you're looking at perfectly aligned holes on each side from a depth standpoint um, you can see where the camera would mount it's the exact same there see that there and uh, it's even got the little holes for these Torx uh, I believe they're Torx screws to remove the camera and attach it there so your camera pretty much is going to be in the correct spot with this bracket but uh, I wanted to just kind of show you that because I think this is a pretty cool little uh, 3D printed graphic here. Just bang that camera. <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, uh, really impressed by that, to say the least. So now we're going to go ahead and transition to the camera relocation onto the new grill. Slide that right into position. And once you're done transferring everything over, your grill is going to look something like this. And that right there is amazing. That's going to look so clean. Okay, so we've got the new grill and uh, new grills underneath the bumper and the grill housing. So what we're going to do is start clipping the original clips back in. These are all these push tabs here all running along the edges. We're starting with the bottom, just mainly to make sure that everything lines up there with that plug. But you probably can start from anywhere you want, I guess. Cruising along. And if anything doesn't align, you know, take your time. Take a look. Make sure there's not something that obviously sticks out to you test everything. During the process we went ahead and popped these clips out of the uh, bumper trim here. So we're going to slap those back on. And just take your time not to break any tabs unnecessarily. But you can see everything's looking pretty good. Everything seems to fit really nice. And all the clips from the new grill have really nice retention, just as good as the original stock ones. So we are now putting the disc tab nuts that we've now learned they might be called. Sliding those into position, they slide in pretty easy because this is all going back on the stock bumper. Uh, and grill housing. There we go. I believe there's two more back there. Or three. There we go. And then we're going to go ahead and clip in the radar while we're here. Boom. And we're going to put the chrome cover piece back on the bottom of this and then proceed to put our screws back in. Transitioning over to the camera uh, clip, we're going to plug that back in. We're going to go ahead and clip on the top of the grill bezel. This is just a series of similar tabs and that'll allow us to start screwing the grill back into place. So you've got the clips in, you've got the bezel back in, you've clipped in your radar, you've clipped in the camera. We went ahead and removed this tab to make things a little bit looser on this camera cable. And we're starting to fill all the screws back in that we removed. So now we're going to attach this air dam back in. And 
And don't forget there's a clip at this top corner here. You want to attach that as well. Now we're attaching the bracket back onto the grill. It's going to be three screws there, one in the middle there. One thing we did is we went ahead and ran these through all the gaps so you have access to these marker lights, cables, and then there should be another one here, and that's your LED bar right there. Yep. But this is basically what it should look like. Really, really clean, and that's sick. So now the grill is installed, and man this looks amazing. Totally worth all the effort, really excited with it. The fit and finish is great. So essentially this is the camera with the 3D printed bracket. And you can see over here on the 360 nothing's been lost. And uh, over here you can see the uh, full entire screen is visible and everything lines up and over here you can see uh, this is the stock uh, bracket and it's exactly the same I can't really see anything different so it looks like everything lines up pretty good. I wanted to show you guys some uh, simple solutions for wiring the switch that they offer uh, with their grill and so You'll see here, um, this type of T-tap here, it's really helpful. You have to make sure you get one that's like 16 to 18 or 24 gauge or 22 gauge uh, because these cables are very, very thin. Um, anyway, uh, any of the tan ones should give you uh, anywhere between 8 to 12 volts, and so that should be enough to uh, tap into. Um, this cable we ran directly from the, uh, from the battery back here. So uh, this is running to the red. This is called a Waco connector. It's a temporary, uh, basically, connector, but you can leave it in here the whole time. It's just it's reusable, so you can pop that thing off, remove it, and use it somewhere else in the future. So it's kind of cool. And then you'll see back here another type of T-tap. Um, this one is like a flat kind of disconnector that slides in there. Black cable is usually ground, so we tapped into that. And uh, that worked for a little while, and we got you know the switch working. And uh, if we didn't have more lights on the way, I mean, that'd be fine, in my opinion. Um, but what we ended up doing is installing an aux beam panel. And so all that is is one cable right here. You can see it there. Going through the firewall. That goes through the engine bay to a box that you will then tap into your fuse panel. All right, so down here you can see through the firewall, um, the original cable for the switch uh, goes right through there. And then you'll send the signal cable back out through that firewall as well. Uh, so we left that in there so you could see it. But also going through there is the aux beam uh, control harness. And that harness is zip tied right there. And you can kind of follow it along. It zip ties there as well. And then crosses the engine bay down there. And so, we put, this is a hybrid, so we don't have a battery actually in the engine bay. It's underneath the back seats. 
So we put it uh, on the fuse panel on this side. So that's where the actual aux beam is. And so I'll take you over there now. All right, so this is the aux beam setup. Basically what it is is a circuit board with fuses and built-in relays. And so every time you attach cables to this uh, board here, it activates another touch panel switch on that other uh, panel that I showed you inside. And so uh, you have to give it power, obviously. So that's what you see here, a breaker going to the power. And then you have to have a signal cable right here that only turns on for 12 volt ignition. And then uh, this harness here goes inside the vehicle, connects to that panel. And that's what actually controls the switches. And so in a hybrid, we have no batteries in the engine bay. So you have to kind of be creative. And so inside here, uh, what we did was we tapped into this uh, fuse panel right here. And you can see there's metal prongs as the light kind of moves around uh, all through here. So you can kind of tap into really any of those. Um, we chose that one and that's just 12 volts that stays on 24 seven. Uh, and then back on the other side, that little red cable back there, that's a normal fuse tap. And so uh, that one is 12 volt ignition only when the car is on. And so that's what actually turns on the box and tells it when the car is on. So we tap that into it. And that's what you see here connecting on this back side here, right there. And so those two combined um, give you enough power to run all your accessories, but also give you signal only at 12 volts. And then it gives you a really nice clean solution on the inside. And then all we did was kind of 3M tape it uh, to this and then drill it on. And uh, so far it's worked out pretty good for us. So once we get our front bumpers done and we add more lighting, we'll just keep tapping into this and we don't have to run any relays or have a ton of wires going through the whole engine bay. Just tap into this box and keep it keep the show going. So. Pretty good. And now we've got all the lights on. Man, this thing is sick. Camera doesn't do justice, but these ambers are just rich. And like, probably the perfect amber color. Uh, and the fitment of them is amazing. Like, they just look one with the grill. The LED bar fits in there perfectly. It's super bright, but not overwhelming. I did not have a 2D Pro, so I can't compare it to the original. I have seen them turn on. And in my opinion, this one has a better pattern and maybe, maybe even brighter. I would say this was a success. <laughs> well, that wraps this up. Uh, I think it came out great. I think it's a no-brainer mod to do. The grill quality is great. The amber lights look awesome. The light bar is worth getting. I would say do this when the vehicle is new, uh, just because if you do this four years from now, your plastics are gonna be brittle. You're probably gonna break some things uh, as you work your way through it. But besides that, uh, you know, thanks for watching and see you next time.